so we know China is facing a series of economic challenges, right? Weak consumer confidence, falling real estate prices, high debt, industrial overcapacity, sluggish exports, and so on and so forth. But the underlying issue of the faltering economy, in my opinion, is a severe population crisis. China's actual population is far below than the official figure of 1.4 billion. I was never able to quantify it until today. So with help of AI, <laughs> ChatGPT, I discovered that China's population may be overstated by 37 to 50%. Let me explain my methodology. It's very simple. Um, I want to compare China and India's population between the 30-year period from 1990 to 2020. Let's also compare their average fertility rate between the two countries and their medium age. So these are the numbers. So I show you the population between the two countries. These are all, by the way, all official numbers. And you can see that in 1990, China's population is over India's by about 270 million. And 30 years later, China's population is still over India by 30. However, if you look at the fertility rate, India's average fertility rate during the 30 years is so much higher than China's, it, almost three. That means every woman on average um, has three children um, in India. That's average during the three, during the 30 years. And in China, uh, the average is 1.7. Both countries have seen median age increase over the years. In 1990, both countries were young countries. I mean, the average age was 20 and 24. But in 30 years, China has grown much older, right? The increase in median age is 15 years, whereas India only increased nine years. So when you look at these numbers, you wouldn't think that there's a problem, but mathematically we know there's a problem. With that kind of fertility rate in India, consistently over 30 years, India's population should be larger than China's. Mathematically, it's impossible that China's population is still greater than India. So intuitively, I know there's, a, there's something wrong. This, this comparison is, is wrong. Mathematically, it's impossible. With the help of AI, I embarked on my journey. I decided to do the math. And since I don't have time to build the model, I asked GBT to help me. I first asked AI to confirm China and India's population in 1990. This is what it gave me. And then I asked the AI to confirm China and India's fertility rate for the past 30 years. And this is uh, China's fertility rate broken down by, by the decade. I color coded them so that red is China and green is India. So you see, China's fertility rate was 2.3 in 1990, and it decreased to 1.7, 1.5, and then uh, by 2020, it's 1.3. Now, th these are the official numbers. There's an expert on Chinese demographic research. His name is Yi Fu Xian, and he is a scientist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And he pointed out that the real fertility rate in China from the year 2000 has been one, I mean 1.1 and not 1.5 or 1.7. So, um, but for the time being, just assume, let's use the official data, let's assume it's 1.7 because I want to use all official number. And the India's fertility rates, as you've seen, also declined, but it's still relatively high. It was 4.0 and it's now 2.2. So if you calculate the average fertility rate, India's average for the past uh, 30 years, uh, its fertility rate is 2.97, almost three, and China's is 1.7. So then I asked GBT to apply the fertility rates for each country and give me the total population in 2020 for India and China respectively. And this is the results it generates. So 2020 population, India's population was 1.38 billion. China was only 890 million. And I compare them to the official or the announced population 
and we've got a problem. So he, this is the official population, right? And China's official population is 1.4 billion. I did a comparison. So here's the comparison. This is the problem. So we have the official population compared to Lay's calculated population. India, the data is within 4% margin of error. So the discrepancy is 50 million. But in China, it's the other way around. The official number is 520 million higher than my estimated number, and it's 37%. China's real population, according to th this calculation, this model, based on the official fertility rate and based on the official population of 1990, should be 890 million, not the 1.41 billion. So what's going on? I then asked ChatGPT, I say, why is there such a huge discrepancy for, for China's population? And the AI replied, well, uh, it could be uh, because we used a simplified, we used a set of simplified assumptions. The AI said, fertility rates alone um, don't fully capture population growth. And it says our calculation only accounted for fertility rates and didn't factor in important variables such as mortality rate and life expectancy. Okay, so my intuition tells me there's no way that 500, you know, China has 500,000, I mean, 500 million more people because everyone lives, lives longer. So I want to quantify the impact on population due to improved life expectancy. So I asked AI, I said, what's the life expectancy change for China in 30 years? Well, the answer I got was it increased from 68 years old to 78, year, 78 years old. So a, an increase of 10 years. I asked the same question for India. It increased from 58.6 to 70.2. There's an increase of almost 12 years. I then asked AI, can you quantify the increase in life expectancy in China and India? And how does that increase contribute to population increase over the 30 years? It says 10 year life expectancy increase in China contributed to 42 million increase in population in China and 47 million increase in India. So the increase in life expectancy only accounted for 42 million of the 520 million discrepancy. It's very small. It's not enough to explain the discrepancy, right? India, which experienced a bigger jump in life, expect, uh, life expectancy, right? Because it's almost 12 years as opposed to 10 years, didn't have a bigger discrepancy. So why would, if life expectancy change is the reason to cause um, increased population, why would that only be a problem for China, but not India? From there, I conclude that life expectancy is a very minor variable in this in the scheme of things in China. So then AI gave me another reason. It says migration. I just asked AI, I said, do you really think 500 million Chinese, which is more than the total population of the United States, and also more than the total population of, of EU, migrated to other countries during the past 30 years, or, or the other way around, uh, 500 million people from other parts of the world, world migrated to China, uh, AI said no, right? It agreed with me that migration is not an issue. It should not contribute to 500 million people discrepancy. Then it gave me a third explanation. It says population momentum. And this is what it exactly said. It said, even with low fertility rates in recent decades, China's large population in the 1990s has a building momentum due to the prior high fertility rates. This means that even though the fertility rate dropped significantly, the population continued to grow for a time as, as older, larger generations aged, but didn't immediately shrink due to low birth rates. Our model didn't account for this momentum. If that were the case, well, why India, which also has a large population, with building momentum, which also experienced decline in fertility rate, didn't have this problem. 
And then in, the AI started to repeat itself by saying nonsense. And I told it to stop. I told it to stop defending the Chinese government unnecessarily. And uh, it would make it not credible. And then the AI finally said that I was right, suspecting that the Chinese population data is wrong or is uh, overstated. And it says, thank you for, for, for holding me accountable. Moving forward, I will ensure to maintain clarity, transparency, and objectivity. That's what AI told me. Uh, I'm, I, I'm still not done yet. I did another exercise. I asked AI to recalculate everything by replacing the official fertility of 1.7 and 1.5 from the year 2000, right? From 2000 to 2010, replace them um, with Dr. Yi Fuxian's fertility assessment of 1.1. It came up with a shocking total population of 695 million. And that's less than half of the announced population of 1.4. By then, I was convinced that the Chinese Communist regime has been faking its demo demographic data, and China's real population is probably 37 uh, to 50% less. Now, we didn't see a sudden decline in consume, consumer spending until only recently because the Chinese economy has been uh, investment driven. So now that investments are leaving China, you know, people started to look, look at consumer spending data. Um, and, and this issue become more pro prominent or more pronounced. And also population loss took place over 30 years and particularly started since 2000. And this reduction in population didn't show up as reduction in consumer spending until this generation reached the age of 18 or even older when they started to spend money. So now we, we start to see the impact on consumer spending because there's a time lag. In addition, this number doesn't include the population losses during COVID. I discussed the high casualties linked to COVID before and started in 2023 and continued into 2024. China suddenly saw a wave of closure, kindergarten closures. So in some cases, private kindergartens have been shrunk by 20% in some regions. So for all these factors combined, I think China's real population may be between 600 million and to 800 million.